tonight, I want to share a story of mine. At the age of 20, I got some exciting news. I was just accepted into the United States Navy's nuclear engineering program. This is one of the most prestigious programs out there in the entire military. I was so happy. So to prepare for the rigorous training, I found myself going to the gym much more than before. I'm in my chest, back, biceps, everything, you name it. And everything was going well for me up until one day where something just felt a little bit off. It's like there was a knot or kink in my back that everyone gets from time to time. Really, I just thought I slept in a weird position. So I did what anybody else would do. I took some rest, iced it, and just let it be for a couple of days. After a week or two off, my back felt fine and I was back to my normal routine, no big deal. However, about a month later, everything changed. I woke up one day and I could not move from bed. Literally, I could not move from bed. Just turning my head one or two degrees to the left or right caused excruciating pain. It's as if there was an electric current being shocked into my spine if I made the slightest movement. I had no idea what was happening. I was so scared. I just woke up. I shouted for my mom and dad to come get me, but there was no position, no angle, nothing that gave me comfort. After getting an emergency MRI, that's when we found out that I actually herniated two discs right up here in my spine. And throughout this whole process, getting up, going in the car, lying down for the MRI, I was in so much pain. To relieve this though, my doctor, he gave me a medicine. A miracle, if you ask me. I was given an opioid known as Vicodin. Let me tell you, within an hour of taking this, I felt amazing. My pain was there. I knew it. I could still feel it, but it wasn't hurting as much. It's as if somebody turned down the dial of that electric current and allowed me to move again. But beyond just moving again, I felt happy. I went from crying just a few hours ago to laughing and smiling. I was so at ease. All of my worries just went away. And really, why should I worry? After doing a quick Google search, I realized I can just get surgery, realign my spine, and my life is fine. So the next day, when we met with my doctor, that's when he explained to me what was going on. You see, because of the complexities of surgery, my young age, and just the nature of this injury, I wasn't actually, I was not a candidate for surgery. Instead, my doctor recommended a different treatment protocol, which mainly consisted of physical therapy, a lot of physical therapy, corticosteroid injections, and of course, pain management. This was not going to be an easy fix, like I thought. So we got back home and I just felt defeated. Physically, my back was killing me like you wouldn't believe. But that wasn't the issue. The real struggle for me was mentally. I realized this is going to be my life now. There is no words that my parents could have said that would have eased my mind there. The best way I can put it is that I felt like I was in a prison without bars, like there was some invisible force preventing me from being happy now. I went up to my room, closed the door. I didn't want to talk to anyone. And just as I was about to close my eyes, I took another Vicodin pill, like I was prescribed to do. And in 30 minutes, all of it went away. So that's where I realized, as long as I keep taking this medication, my life is fine and everything stays on track. So over the course of the next few months, I developed a routine. I'd wake up, brush my teeth, take a Vicodin, get ready for work. And by the time I got there, that feeling would kick in and the, and the medication would take effect. And then in the afternoons, I was still in college, so I had to go to school. 
So I would take my second dose in the afternoons. This routine of mine continued for a while. And after a couple uh, months of going through this, and as the pain got worse, this wasn't enough for me though. It got to the point where I used to be taking two Vicodin pills per day to get me through the day, but it got to the point where I was taking at least four as my doctor prescribed it. I didn't realize that at the time, but I was slowly developing a tolerance to this and the habit was forming. Ultimately, Vicodin wasn't enough for me and I had to get placed onto stronger medications. You see, what was happening is this. The medication was helping me get through day by day, but the underlying cause, why I even had the pain to begin with, that injury was still there. As time went on and the years went by, the one thing I did right was going to physical therapy religiously. It eventually got to the point where my spine was healed. This is amazing. I did not need to get surgery, but there's one issue. I've been taking this medication for so long and we had to figure out a way to get me off of it. My doctor understood this situation and worked with me to overcome it. He initially began to lower the dose and taper me off. He started by reducing the amount to an amount that I could work with. And he kept reassessing it with me. This was a team approach where I had just as much of a say as he did when it came to this matter. If there were some weeks that I thought he cut it too low or it was too drastic of a change, I'd call him up and I'd let them know to, hey, I need the amount adjusted back up. I did not have to fight, argue, or justify too much when it came to this. You see, my doctor did not see me as an addict who was seeking out drugs. I actually felt like a patient who was being heard and not judged the whole time. This was not just a continuous lowering week after week after week after week, but rather him and I were working together towards some sort of end goal that we both wanted to reach, which if you ask me is what medicine should be all about. That's why I'm able to stand here today and share this story. Now, the reason I wanted to share this experience of mine is to bring up a greater subject. Since 2010, the opioid epidemic has grown significantly. Just in 2019, we had over 70,000 drug overdose deaths in the United States alone. About 50,000 of them coming from opioids. That's over 70% of all drug-related deaths. But we have to keep in mind, most of these deaths, they were not caused by prescription medications. A lot of them were actually caused by synthetic drugs cooked up in a drug dealer's basement, like heroin, fentanyl, and other things. A big reason of how we even ended up in this mess to begin with is a 20-year run-up of overprescribing opioids like their candy and not being careful or monitoring this. A lot of these people going to the drug dealers to begin with they had an addiction that began at a doctor's office. And the loss of all of this, it's not felt by Johnson & Johnson, Pfizer, or any pharmaceutical company. It's felt by our own families, our own communities. And the pressure to fix this has fallen onto the shoulders of healthcare professionals. That's why in recent years, the DEA has been setting guidelines and urging doctors to cut down on opioid prescriptions and limit the amount that they give. This sounds good in theory, but there's one issue. When you're dealing with a subject as subjective as pain, you cannot have a one-size-fits-all approach. You cannot have a generic guideline. The question I wanna ask is this. Is our goal to reduce the amount of opioid prescriptions? Or are we trying to reduce the amount of opioid deaths? Since 2012, opioid prescriptions are down 35%. Opioid deaths, they're up over 250%. Simply cutting down on the prescriptions is not working. So 
What's the solution now? Well, we can't stop using these drugs completely, but we also can't keep giving them out like they're candy. This journey of mine has allowed me to see both sides of the battle. I've seen the good and bad that can come from these prescription medications. We need to have a better understanding of an individual patient's level of pain and prescribe medication in a way that can balance pain relief along with addictive potential. You see, pain is subjective. What's painful for me may not be painful for you. Who am I to tell you how much pain you should be feeling? That's like telling someone how depressed they should be after they lose a loved one. There's no generic guideline. And just like depression, pain is solely based on an individual's lived experiences, perception, and lifestyle. So I challenge each of you when you go home today, think about who you are, the unique thoughts that you have, the experiences you've gone through, and any pain or suffering that you have ever felt. It's important that we remember when it comes to this opioid epidemic, at the end of the day, we're not dealing with a number on a chart, some bar on a metric, but rather individuals, just like you and me. Thank you. <laughs>